Welcome everyone to Monday Match Analysis. I'm Gil Gross and it is time for a preview of the second leg of the Sunshine Double, the Miami Masters. Another 96 player draw, 32 seeds, they all get a bye. And uh, since 2019, it has been held uh, twice because it was obviously canceled in 2020 at this uh, new venue at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, moved from Key Biscayne. And while we're, we're still trying to kind of get a sense of what it's like, I think uh, we're starting to see that it's a little bit faster in speed compared to the uh, older venue. Last year, it was a Yannick Sinner versus Hubert Hercoc final. We had Roberto Bautista Gut and Andre Rublev as well in the semis. I think it's playing pretty quick. Uh, definitely a uh, unique venue aesthetically. And one thing is for sure, it's very difficult over the years we've seen to do well at both Indian Wells and Miami. So that's a couple of things to keep in mind. If you are new to the channel, here is how this works. I will go quarter by quarter. I will give you a dark horse, an unseated player most likely to go deep. I will give you an upset alert, a seated player most likely to lose early. I'll give you an early popcorn match, an early round matchup that I do not think you should miss. And I will make predictions on the quarterfinals and the final weekend. All of that... After a quick shout out to Play Your Court, Play Your Court is the place to go if you're looking for a local coach, practice partner, or match. The number one reason people quit tennis is because they can't find people to play with. Play Your Court ensures that that does not happen, and I don't want that to happen either, so I've arranged a 50% off discount to join the Play Your Court community. That is at playyourcourt.com backslash gilgross. The link is in the description. This is also brought to you by Prize Picks. If you enjoy picking props for tennis, over unders, aces, number of games, all that, Prize Picks is the place to go. And if you sign up using the promo code GILL, you will get a 100% bonus, which means whatever your deposit is, $25, let's say, boom, it's $50 using the promo code GILL. Link is in the description as well. It feels like a pretty weird time right now. And I think we're going to see some chaos. I think. Because not only did we see at Indian Wells Medvedev down and Tsitsipas down and Zverev down. Not only are there kind of doubts around all three of those players. I think all of them got pretty bad draws can throw Rublev in there too, who's been hot. Bad draw, uh, in my opinion. So as we kind of go through this, um, man, it just feels like a lot of different things can happen. This is one of the more wide open tournaments that I can remember, um, especially pre-US Open. Things open up after that, we know that, but this is a tournament where I uh, I think we could see some, some surprises. And it would have been de very difficult to predict this event correctly last year with the sinner Hercotch final. I think this could be the same. You just get that feeling. Of course, no Nadal, no Djokovic. Nadal um, news today. Fractured rib, unfortunately. Out four to six weeks. That'll go into the clay court season. Uh, not the news that anyone, including Rafa, wanted. Um, so no Rafa, no Djokovic here. Let's get into it. Beginning with Daniil Medvedev's quarter, the top seeds are Medvedev, Hercoc, Shapovalov, Bautista Agut, Basilashvili, Evans, Garin, and Karatsev. My dark horse in this section is Jensen Brooksby. He was a dark horse at Indian Wells as well, and he proved me correct. Upset Stefano Tsitsipas, lost uh, to a... A funky matchup, in my opinion, for Brooksby and in Cam Norrie. And uh, I continue to think that, especially in the United States on hard court, he's, uh, he's someone that should be seated. And his ranking just hasn't caught up with how good he is. So he's a dark horse here. Upset alert, I said lots of them. Lots of them for upset alert. And uh, let me just take you through this here. 
Medvedev will face the winner of Dobonis and Murray. I fully expect that to be Andy Murray. There's plenty of issues mentally right now with Murray's ability to go deep in tournaments, Murray's ability to be consistent. However, you face Murray early in a tournament and he's a major underdog, you still don't want that. That's not a good draw for Medvedev. And uh, I think it's a good spot for Andy to play his best tennis. And we've seen him play a lot of top players, a lot of top 10 players, really, really close in just the last six months. Sometimes he hasn't been able to pull it out, but I consider that a, a dangerous spot for Andy. You're more concerned about, well, let's say, let's say Murray does pull off the upset there. What does he do in the next round? That's kind of been the issue for him, but... Uh, especially against a player like Medvedev, who I, I know Murray is going to use his craft to probably put in a lot of uncomfortable positions. I think that could be an interesting matchup. Basilashvili will uh, likely face Brooksby round two. I think Brooksby uh, would be a good candidate to upset the 18 seed there. Garin on a hard court is kind of always on upset alert for me. Uh, then you have uh, Herkoc, who could face Arthur Rinderknecht in round two, I think that's a tricky one for the defending champion trying to open his campaign, a lot of pressure on him. So I put lots of them for upset alert because I think these top guys in Medvedev and, and Herkoc and Basilashvili and well, Medvedev and Herkoc, I think have bad draws. And then Basilashvili and Garin, I also uh, considered those two. Medvedev and Murray round two is early popcorn. And now I will reveal my quarterfinal. It is... Denis Shapovalov defeating Roberto Bautista Agut. Let me start with Medvedev. I was fully ready to pick a bounce back for Daniil Medvedev here. These conditions are way better for him than at Indian Wells. A little humid. I know that, that Daniil has cramped in the past in very humid conditions. He really struggled at the Tokyo Olympics with the conditions. Miami can get pretty suffocating with the humidity. But other than that, the conditions are much better for Daniil. And he's number two in the world again. He'll go back to number one if he makes the semis. He's well-rested, and I was worried about fatigue. So I went into this event thinking that I might pick Medvedev to do great. Really. But the the draw is just not good because I talked about Murray. Then you have Bautista Agut who's just a a nightmare for him. He's never beaten RBA. RBA beat him in Miami last year. The score lines aren't good. And I just, I don't think it's a, it's a coincidence. Um, I I think it makes sense. And if it's going to be hot, that's not going to help either because those matches get so physical. What I have, what I really see in this quarter is kind of a bit of a matchup, a weird sort of, there's a lot of lopsided and interesting matchup situations because I uh, I think, first of all, in this quarterfinal, I think Shapovalov and RBA, I think Dennis matches up great with RBA. And I said that before, their Wimbledon match, and then Dennis won that very, very easily. I, I don't know if that was round of 16 or a quarterfinal, but uh, Dennis won that very easily. The one area, the one thing that I'm not sure about is Shapovalov and Herkoc. I actually think that Herkoc is a pretty good matchup for Shapovalov, but I, I'm just a little nervous about Hubie in this spot. As the defending champion, He uh, his results have been fine, but definitely not overwhelming to start this year. And he... It, it, it is in Florida. It's where he trains. He, he should play this tournament very well. I'm, I'm not necessarily down on him, and I could see him making the semifinal, but he just hasn't made the improvements that I wanted to see him make this year, and he hasn't had the consistent results where I just feel like it's vulnerable. Um, so that's the one area. I'm, I wasn't sure if I wanted to pick Shapovalov or, or Hercoc, and uh, I'm going with Dennis here. And of course, I, I do think that it's a tough draw for, for Medvedev. So that's how uh, I see the quarter shaking out. Shapovalov, semifinalist here in 2019. Really good in heat and humidity. Uh, when the conditions get very lively, that tends to help Dennis. 
And I do think that at a certain point, his partnership with Jamie Delgado, which is a new partnership, I think he's, I think we're going to see that start to pay dividends for Chapo. And, and we know that these runs can come out of nowhere for him. So I'm feeling Dennis here and uh, I'm not, I, I almost think he maybe needs to not face Hercotch in order for this run to happen. And maybe Hercotch needs to take a bad loss and get upset, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I'm going with Shapovalov over RBA. And again, you know, I'm not, I'm not too down on Medvedev here. I, I just, I just don't like his draw. And you know, there have been points where I don't care what Medvedev's draw is on a hard court. There have been, there have been points where it's like, I'm just gonna pick Medvedev to win. I don't really care. This right now, just I'm not confident enough in him to, to have that mindset going in. Uh, let's move on to Stefano Tsitsipas's quarter. Tsitsipas, FAA, Fritz, Alcaraz, Chilich, Hachinov, Dimonor, and Ramos Vinolas. My dark horse in this quarter, I have two of them. Seb Korda made the quarterfinals last year. He also trains in Miami. He's used to the humidity. He will uh, love a speedy hard court. And Botik van de Zanschkulp, who uh, I think is playing a lot better than his ranking at the moment. And uh, very good on hard court. He's moving and defending extremely well. And uh, he's a, a very, very, very solid player. Who I, I think, again, definitely uh, someone who I think should be seated. If I were power ranking, I'd have him in my top 30 quite easily. Uh, upset alert is Karen Hatchinov. Um, I feel like Hatchinov, whose results have dropped off a little bit, he'll face the winner of Tommy Paul and Benjamin Bonzi. Whoever wins that first round matchup, I think, can present problems. Bonzi, Bonzi takes the ball early, can rush Hatchinov, I think, in that matchup. And I'm high on Tommy Paul. I think Paul's about to surge in the in the long term. And he's good on clay, by the way. So I don't think moving to clay is going to really halt his progress like it will for a lot of Americans. My early popcorn matchup is Korda versus Alejandro Davidovich Fokina. I don't know why ADF continues to be in these early popcorn matchups. He just he just is. Um, but at Indian Wells, he definitely proved me right. His match with Korda, uh, sorry, his match with Chorich was really good. It went to a third set. He won at 7-5 in the third. So this one, again, first round matchup, Korda and ADF. I think that one will be good. Revealing the quarterfinal here, I have FAA defeating Carlos Alcaraz. Alcaraz and Felix were both players who coming in, I was really high on and I, I wanted to pick. And uh, the fact that they were in the same quarter together was, uh, you know, made things pretty difficult on me. Taylor Fritz, uh, we'll see if he even plays. My hunch is that he won't because of the ankle, but we'll see what happens. Tsitsipas has just not been convincing. These courts will actually speed up on him, and um, I I think if the draw opened up for him, that would be one thing, but I actually think that this is one of the worst quarters to be in with Felix and Alcaraz, who to me are both top four players going into this week in terms of Again, if I were to power rank them, how high I am on them. I think they're both top four contenders at the Miami Open. So I go with Felix. Carlos had the deep run. I, I don't know if fatigue is even a factor with him given the the conditioning, the, you know, the shape that he's in. But it might be a lot to ask emotionally even with going kind of back-to-back -back the Indian Wells-Miami grind after going deep. Uh, FAA serves a lot better than Carlos here uh, at this point. So on a speedier court, that's going to matter a lot more. So it's kind of one of those things. I think on a slower surface right now, even I'd pick Carlos Alcaraz. But uh, these courts might be fast enough that I think FAA uh, was the the nod here. I give him the the nod. All right, so one last look at Stefano Tsitsipas's quarter. And let's move on to the number four seed, Matteo Berrettini's quarter. I feel like it's been a, a... I don't know if I've ever... 
No, he's had his own quarter before, I think, in my previews. It feels like I haven't said this much, though, Matteo Berrettini's quarter, because I only preview slams and masters. So, um, Berrettini, Rublev, Sinner, Opelka, PCB, Monfils, Tiafo, and Fonini. My dark horse in this quarter is Nick Kyrgios. I do worry about, obviously, wear and tear. And Kyrgios was a, a dark horse for me heading into Indian Wells. And I love that he was coming from Australia. He was going to be rested and fresh and motivated. And, and he, he seemed like he was in a good space uh, mentally. And, you know, Nick definitely validated my kind of gut feeling, honestly, that he was just in a good place right now. And definitely show that he is in a good place. Now, you might say, oh, he's the same old Nick. He was all over the place emotionally against Nadal. Here's the thing. He tried very hard. He had 100% effort. That's what is missing when Kyrgios is at his worst. He's just not trying very hard. So one thing that he had from start to finish at Indian Wells is intensity and effort. So I don't care. Look, do I want him to, like, stop getting mad at chair umpires when they're it's not even their fault and they didn't even do anything wrong and start complaining about everything and everything all the time. Yes, I would love that. But as far as how he's playing, it's mostly about effort and he's putting in a lot of effort. Upset alert is Andre Rublev. Now I'm, I did not want to do this, uh, but, and again, I guess, I guess right now my preview is very focused on this section of the draw as I look at it, but um, look, Rublev was a semifinalist last year, last year. I do worry about fatigue with him. He's played a ton of tennis recently, but we have seen like in 2020, we have seen him play a lot of tennis and keep up the results for a while. Um, but between fatigue and the draw, he probably has the worst draw of any top eight seed in the tournament facing the winner of Kyrgios and Manorino. I feel like you know, Kyrgios, we know that he's dangerous. We know what he can do. Manorino, I think, is a pretty tough matchup for Rublev. The way he's going to absorb the pace and keep the ball low, especially on Rublev's backhand, I could see Andre really, really hating that. I think if my memory serves, let me look this up real quick. I think Manorino's beaten Rublev before. Um, let me see if I'm correct. Yeah, he did it at the Kremlin Cup um, in uh, last year. So Kremlin Cup, that's in Moscow. Uh, Rublev was the one seed. Rublev wasn't so good at last fall when that happened. But yeah, he he beat him. So brutal for Rublev. Again, that's someone I, I didn't think I would be down on. But draw and fatigue. I do think if Rublev gets through that first match, he could be off to the races. He could be. My quarterfinal is Monfils defeats Yannick Sinner. I had to think long and hard, actually, about do I want to put Sinner or Rublev in that spot? Now, Sinner had that illness at Indian Wells, so I don't know what's going on. I tried to look it up and do some research. I couldn't figure it out. I don't know if Sinner has been sick. If he has been, then that could obviously be an issue. Um, I'm just not sure, but Sinner will be confident here. If he hasn't been sick, then he will be well-rested. I do think he's got a really nice section of the draw that he should enjoy. I think he's kind of flying under the radar at the start of 2022 because he he his results are pretty consistently good. Um, and I think in the in the Rublev matchup, there there is a lot to like there. They're obviously similar players, but I think backhand to backhand center. Uh, is a lot better, and those are a lot of the time the matchups that Rublev loses is to great backhands. Uh, they can go down the line and keep them honest and then win that backhand to backhand rally. So I, I threw Sinner there, assuming that he's not, he hasn't been in, in bed uh, and he's not going to be uh, a zombie here <laughs> based on his illness. But I have Gail Monfils coming through. Monfils comes, comes off of a strong Indian Wells performance. He's clearly making a push here. He clearly still believes. He's, uh, he's confident. And the draw, I think, really opens up for him on the bottom half here. Um, 
we've kind of been waiting, I think, for a long time to see the the combination of Monfils's newfound, I guess, shot selection and court savvy and physical health and, and mental health all come together at the same time. And I think we could easily be seeing that now. Should, again, feel really good about himself. He's got Riley Opelka. Now, Opelka's playing well. And if the draw was a little bit different, I could have Opelka going really far. Monfils is awesome against the big servers. He plays these guys incredible. The return of serve is by far the most underrated part of Gail Monfils' game. And then you have a little section on the bottom here with Berrettini and Tiafo. And I don't feel great about either of them. I think that is one of the more opportunistic sections of the draw. So... I could see Monfils making a push here. This is also his favorite time of year. You see a lot of time a lot of the time Monfils's best time of year is between the Australian Open and the clay court season where he he can uh, pull off some really good results. So, feeling Gale here in a in a quarter that I don't know. Um I could see it being chaotic then again, you know, Berrettini and Rublev and Sinner and Opelka. Um, you know, it's not like any of them, not like any of them aren't capable of, of making the semis here. So this is a good quarter. It'll be interesting. Let's move on now to Alexander Zverev's quarter. The top seeds are Zverev, Rude, Nori, Schwartzman, Sinego, Isner, Dimitrov, and Bublik. This is the quarter that definitely excites me the least. It's probably the weakest quarter. I mean, I feel like there were a lot of options in the top two quarters, a lot of options in Matteo Berrettini's quarter. In this quarter, I, I don't see a lot of options, and I, I think it can only go a couple of ways. My dark horse is Jack Draper. Draper's been incredible at the challenger level. He's been... Uh, stringing together a couple of titles. And usually that means, especially when someone is that age, usually that means they're ready to do something tour level. There there are exceptions to that rule. You know, we've seen, we've seen like Talon Greeks poor, surprisingly, hasn't, hasn't played that well at tour level despite all the success on the challengers. But more often than not, when someone does that, you should really take that seriously. And what Jack Draper's doing, especially at his age, you should take that seriously. And uh, he's a dark horse. He's a wild card. IMG guy. And IMG owns the tournament. So that's why he gets a, uh, a wild card here. Upset alert. Uh, none. And it's not, again, it's not that I love the top seeds. It's that I, I don't see a lot of unseeded players that interest me here um, at all. Early popcorns, Vera versus Chorich. Still that intrigue about Chorich's comeback. I thought that was a, a positive start for him last week uh, in the loss to Alejandro Davidovich Fokina. And now let's see what he can do against an Alexander Zverev. Alexander Zverev has uh, yet to win a match since the tournament moved to Hard Rock Stadium. So he's lost round two and he's gotten a bye. So he's 0-2. And, and once again, you know, that makes me not put him through to the semifinals. And I'm going with Cameron Nori, who's been absolutely sensational ever since the really rough start to the year. Lost first round to Sebastian Corda, was winless at ATP Cup. Uh, the Corda loss was in Australia. He's he's looked tremendous, and this is an opportunity for him. Really big opportunity. Uh, he faces Casper Rude. I think that's a great matchup for uh, for Cam. Although, did Rude beat him in San Diego? What happened in San Diego? I remember they played, but I'm fuzzy on what happened. Rude Nori. San Diego, Rude, Rude, oh yeah, 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 Rude destroyed 6-love, six 6-2, six um, and then Rude beat him at the Tour Finals. Okay, so, uh, you know, maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is all Casper, but uh, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with my convictions and uh, go with Cam Nori. I think he's playing the best tennis out of everyone in this quarter. Uh, Zverev's got a really good draw. So I could see him getting to the quarterfinal here. Again, I wasn't going to put him through because he's got to show me that he uh, can win at this event in this setting uh, because there have been, again, two first-round losses here. But I feel pretty good right now about putting Cam Nori through the se to a uh, semifinal. Moving on to the final weekend, 
Battle between Canadians, FAA and Shapovalov. FAA defeats Denis Shapovalov in three sets. Cam Nori defeats Gail Monfils in three sets. FAA defeats Nori in two. Now, again, I feel like FAA versus Alcaraz could be a real inflection point. And I don't, I wouldn't be too shocked if, um, I wouldn't be too shocked if Alcaraz just makes a huge splash here. So I consider him a contender and I want to say that. Uh, FAA and Shapovalov both made the semis here in 2019, by the way. So it would be the second time that happened. Monfils, I'm feeling great about, and, and Nori, I'm feeling great about right now. But um, obviously, you would think that a Tsitsipas or a Medvedev or a Zverev, you would think that one of them is uh, is going to bounce back here. I don't have that, but, uh, you know, I, I am anticipating that one of them can prove me wrong here. It's just none of them I picked. Uh, FAA, though, is the player that I'm feeling best at. He's well-rested. This is back to, you know, back to speedy conditions or speedier conditions where he can be much more successful versus uh, Indian Wells, and he's uh, well-rested, which I like. I really like that coming into Miami. Someone who... Someone who's really, really good and lost early at Indian Wells. I'm into that. Uh, someone who's trained in Florida plenty. I really like his fitness in the humidity, his lungs in the humidity. And and I think there's opportunity for him overall right now with the whole landscape of, of the tour. Big title for Felix. I could see it. So I'm going with FAA over Cam Nori. Very interesting time on tour right now. Uh, looking forward to Miami immensely. I actually should be able to deliver more Miami coverage than I was Indian Wells. There's a little bit less going on in uh, in my life over the, the next week. So looking forward to that. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.